Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Hassan, and I am honored to have with me Malcolm Nance. Uh, Malcolm Nance is a legend in my mind. I see him all the time in the media. Uh, he's written so many important books. Malcolm, I think you and I first connected when you were writing about ISIS as a cult, and we talked about the bite model. But before we start, I just want to read your bio and let our okay. listeners know what an amazing background you have. Uh, first of all, you're the executive director of Tapestry, which stands for the Terror Asymmetrics Project on Strategy Tactics and Radical Ideologies. We're going to circle back to why you called your company that. Right. But I want to state that you are a career counterterrorism and intelligence officer for the U.S. government's special operations, homeland security, intelligence agencies with over 33 years uh, in, in combating radical extremism. You're an honorably retired U.S. Navy Arabic speaking intelligence collections operator, field interrogator, survival evasion resistance escape specialist and founder of the advanced terrorism abduction and hostage survival school you've spent more than two decades on clandestine anti-terrorism and counterterrorism intelligence operations in the middle east north africa Bal i mean you have walked <laughs> the walk sir and your latest book is they want to kill americans the militias terrorists and the deranged ideology of the Trump insurgency. I'm not gonna name all your other books, but people need to know you, go to your website. And we're facing a crisis in America and the world, frankly. And I think your unique viewpoint, because you know this field, is what the public needs to digest. But where I've been frustrated is you get on CNN for two minutes, I want to do a deeper dive and really get sure. to some substance. Thank you so much for your courage, your willingness to stand up and speak truth to power, uh, to call a spade a spade, to call a terrorist a terrorist. And um, so I'm passing the baton to you. To <laughs> okay. Well, statement. in fact, our history goes back to when I was writing a book called An End to Al-Qaeda, hmm. which I think came out in 2007. Okay. So we've had an acquaintance for some time. And then we renewed it when I wrote in 2014, uh, Defeating ISIS. Defeating ISIS. And you're right. I wanted to use the bite model of, you know, to, to show that there, there was a history of Islamic cultism that would right. crop up every couple of centuries and it would look sort of like ISIS and Al-Qaeda in terms of its ideology. Right. And I, I wanted to know, was, was this really a cult? Because in Islam, they'll never use the word cult because it means that only God is making a decision. Therefore, you can't be found culpable of being part of a cult because God chose you to do this. No, that's fascinating. Yeah, so you'll be um, uh, not surprised, maybe you will be, that I actually went and got my doctorate uh, a year ago, and I, and I was involved with a forensic think tank at Harvard Medical School, because mm -hmm. I realized nothing was changing. I've been an activist for 45 years. Nothing's changing. The law itself is 100 years behind the science of what we know right. about psychology. So the folks at the program in psychiatry and the law said, you need to get your doctorate and do a quantitative study on the bite model and show whether it has validity. And right. so I did it and it's, it's published and I connect the dots with undue influence and the law. I even offer a law professor emeritus's social influence model, which could be used to prosecute Donald Trump and a whole lot of other bad actors in terms of the one six insurgency. But back to you. you, you know this stuff. Well, I know it from, as you said, I'm more of a field practitioner. And the problem is when you're dealing with um, extremist groups, extremist ideologies, uh, and then their, their subsequent behaviors, 
which almost inevitably lead to violence. And then from regular violence to ultra violence, mm -hmm. as we saw in the Al Qaeda model. Right. Uh, but again, when we were talking about Al Qaeda and ISIS as, as cults, or the word they use in Arabic is abadi, right? Which means to be, it's derivative from to be a slave of, interesting. right? So um, it, it became very interesting to me because with, within their cultures, they just saw this as religious fervor. Okay. And if you go back and you look at even popular fiction, which is sort of portrayed these things, Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, for example, right? Uh -huh. Was the rise, was a resurrection after 200 or 300 years of the Thuggies, which was a cult of the God, which worshiped the goddess Kali, the destroyer. Right. And it was, you know, they had come back and were like murdering people. But the thuggies were a real thing. They were actual right. manifestation, but they were a religious cult. But, you know, and as far as recently as Om Shinrikyo, right. the Japanese um, religious cult, which is really cultish. I mean, they, you know, they worship one man. The guy thought that he was, a, you know, sort of an incarnation of a Japanese Jesus. And he had this anime cartoon image of purifying Japan through mass murder, you yep. know, spraying chemicals on the city of, uh, of, of not just yeah, Tokyo. Sarin actually. gas that he had uh, his people develop. And 60 Minutes actually called me up at 1030 at night and said, we want you in Tokyo in the morning to be our on-site expert. And wow. I was like, you want me to drop everything, go to the other side of the world where they're looking for a terrorist who's shooting the head of the police? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, are you flying me first class? And they're like, no, we don't do that. I no. said, forget <laughs> it. He At said, let me call class. you back. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, I so did it. And, and Om Shinrikyo is a terrorist uh, mind control cult. Well, you know, the funny thing is people remember the Tokyo Sarin attack in the subway, right. but they don't know that they actually flew a, no, not flew, they drove a truck with a giant industrial mosquito sprayer, I think the year before. And, 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 and I want to say it was in Hokkaido, but don't hold me to that. Mm -hmm. And they sprayed diluted sarin gas all throughout the city thousands of people got sick and the japanese police had that failure of imagination because the way that people were describing it was this giant truck with chemical masks on the workers wearing white jumpsuits they said well it must have been the city they must have been spraying for bugs uh but this was a group that had a farm, a sheep farm in Australia, thousands of acres, yeah. where they were testing the sarin gas on sheep. They had sent a medical team to Uganda to, to harvest Ebola, to bring it back to Japan, to kill everyone in Japan with it. I mean, a cartoonish organization, but truly a manifestation of a cult, which brings me to where my, my latest book is. And the, the name of the book is they want to kill Americans, right? Right. Why would I choose a title like that? Because, you know, knowing your work, knowing the, the types of extremists that I've had to work with globally, having seen, you know, a major extremist event in the United States with Timothy McVeigh right. blowing up a building, uh, killing 186 people. Oklahoma City, right? Right, in Oklahoma City, we have the capacity to have la A, lack the imagination of what a cultic group would do, right? No one ever foresaw Jim Jones in the People's Temple in Guyana literally drinking tens of gallons of Kool-Aid, pouring it into the mouths of their children and their wives and their, you know, and drinking it themselves and laying down and peacefully dying for Jim Jones, who, if I'm not mistaken, shot himself. Yeah, was so Deborah Layton person. was a, a long-term follower, and they were practicing drinking the cyanide. She's the one who went to Congressman Leo Ryan, persuaded right. him to come. And in his hubris, he thought if he just had an NBC crew with him, no one would harm him. And they oh, killed him. They assassinated him. Propensity towards violence. Uh, because as I like to explain, and I, and I just... And it, I really brought this out to the country in July 2016 when I was the first person in news media to go on air 
and say the the Hillary Clinton emails and the WikiLeaks release of them is an information warfare operation being carried out by a foreign intelligence agency to, you know, to elect a select person as president who they favor. And it was just so far beyond the imagination at that time. The news media said, oh, salacious Hillary Clinton things. That's what we want. We have news leaks and it was coming up. But that hostile intelligence agency had 70 years of psychological, sociological studies of the American psyche right. under the Soviet Union. And all Soviet academia, they only fed to their government intelligence agencies, right? They weren't right. doing this for fun. Right. They were you know, torturing people in the gulags and seeing how that impacted people psychologically. And technically, the, every person in the country was a rat in a Skinner box. And the, the, the state was pressing the electric shock button all the time. So right. they knew when Vladimir Putin came in and created his oligarchy, this is a KGB officer who knew where the archives were. Yeah, exactly. And, and they knew, I can hear them now, someone go find out what is the fault line of the United States. And the chief psychologist of Russian intelligence, the FSB would say, hey, I have wheelbarrows full of this study. It's racism. Mm. You know, let's hit that and support our guy. And that's and they created initially <clears throat> the initial information sphere, right. which was taken up by the Trump campaign, who ran with it and has now turned it in to a national psychological weapon system. Yeah. So lots to discuss. But I mm -hmm. was part of a, uh, a uh, State Department counterterrorism <coughs> meeting at the Aspen Institute. Mm. And a lot of big shots were there. I was honored to be asked to be there. But I saw a demonstration of an AI computer system, Malcolm, in mm -hmm. August of 2015 where they were able to track all open source communication on the internet in 20 languages in real time and right. explain how ISIS was recruiting online. And the fellow who was describing it said, think of STDs. The more right. sex you have with someone with syphilis, the more likely you, you will get it. That was his <laughs> analogy to us. Good enough. And he could show a person being lured into a front group, maybe a matchmaking site, and how they would be surrounded by people they thought were newcomers also, but they were operatives. And right. swarming, what we used to call love bombing in the Moonies, right. in real time, this was swarming online. Anyway, I, I looked at this demonstration. I'm like, there's a presidential campaign next year. This is dangerous. And, you know, the thing is, the Russians were masters of this early on in what we called Web War One. Web War One was their initial attacks using information warfare, harnessing the Internet, bringing the Internet down in certain places, leaving it up for disinformation and misinformation. Right. Uh, when they attacked, when they had their uh, their their fight with um, Georgia uh, and then when they had uh, psychological skirmishes with Estonia and Latvia. And then technically, you know, I mean, and their final battle was with Ukraine uh, in the invasion in 2014. Right. Web War II was the United States and using disinformation and information amplification to create those networks. But what we never could have thought possible was that American citizens would understand the weaponization of the individual's social psyche, so to speak, and how that would be the dissemination platform for a deadly nation killing, mind numbing, cult, technically cult building yeah. operation on a national scale, technically international. Right. And some of it got quite out of control with the, the rise of the QAnon cult. Right. Okay. Because we all know, for those of you who don't know who QAnon is, it's crazy people. I, Steve, you know, Dr. Hassan doesn't like to use these technical terms, but in the <laughs> intelligence community, we like to label uh, people who have mental defects and are self-reinforcing or reinforcing with each other those defects and using it 
to, to bring in new members. We call that crazy. So QAnon believes Donald Trump is a hero that is taking down global networks of power and stopping the rape, abduction, murder, and the exsanguination of babies being done by top Democrats. And the, 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 the pinnacle of the QAnon theory is he would lead a storm that would mass murder every liberal and Democrat in America. And many people thought January 6th was the storm. So, right. yikes. So let me, <laughs> let me uh, come back at you a sure. teeny bit and say that when I was a leader in the Moonies cult, and by the way, the yeah. Moonies were at January 6th, Sean. Yes, Moon, they were. Thing, Antifa, the Moonies newspaper, Washington Times, disinformation right. as well. Uh, and they have they have not only a gun factory with assault rifles, but the rod of iron ministry. They right. say you right. all need assault rifles and training right. compounds in Texas and I believe in, in Tennessee. Um, in any case, my experience as a leader is mentally disturbed people did not make good members. We got rid of them or we made them associate members. We wanted really smart, idealists, committed, rock solid people who could work 18 to 21 hours a day, seven days a week for no money. And right. And so I just there's a made me a little nervous because I don't want the public just to put down right. everyone who's ever been in a mind control cult because they're not all crazy. They act crazy. I right. confess I was crazy when I fasted for Nixon during Watergate because Moon said God wants Nixon to be president. Doesn't matter right. what the country thinks. God wants it. We're going to do it. You make a very good point. And, and I'm glad I, I often see you contradicting me on television at that point, because terrorist groups are the same way. Terrorist groups do not, you know, there, there, there was a famous uh, book, which is foundational reading for counterterrorism experts uh, that used to be called, that is still called Criminals, Crusaders and Crazies. Uh -huh. And that was the three tiers of people who were operating in the, the 1960s and 70s as they believed it at that time in terrorist groups. Uh, fundamental you know, uh, education in counterterrorism is real committed terrorists do not have mental defects. They don't, they are cold, cool, calculating ideologues. Yeah. Um, granted from time to time, like the Palestinians and, uh, and other groups have taken people like, you know, uh, they've had suicide bombers who were, you know, uh, children with Down syndrome. Yeah. And uh, folks on the spectrum, part, too, are very vulnerable, Malcolm. Like, right. Um, for, but for the most part, well, there's the famous case of the young boy. I think he was 12 years old in Israel who was sent to be a suicide bomber. And, you know, people with, with who are on the autism spectrum or, or, or in Down syndrome, they're actually very, very loving people. Absolutely. And when he went to the checkpoint, the army told him to put his arms up. He just complied with everything and he go, they go what is this and he goes oh it's a bomb they gave me you know and 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 showed that you know maybe that was the wrong recruit that you want to use yeah they didn't unless, rehearse like, in iraq. they didn't yeah, rehearse in iraq they properly. use remotely triggered people so I you would to, you know you're just a vehicle i'd like to come uh, back to what i think mm -hmm. is a crucial thing that you talked about a failure of imagination right mm -hmm. but i want to say that you know, Americans are uh, feel like they're exceptional and somehow they're above the possibility that their minds can get hacked. It only happens to the weak people. But I know the truth and QAnon or whatever other, you know, indoctrination. Right. So I really well, I'm trying to message out, hey, like get off your high horse. Think right. back over your life. Did you never get conned? Did you never right. like fall in love with someone who abused you or work for a boss who was a malignant narcissist who right. took advantage? Oh. Like to find common experiences that will take people into a more humble kind of like, oh, because they need to have hope. People can get out. Like I got yes. out of the cult 
we can get 70 million people out of the cult, but we need to really use our imaginations right. to have a complex system approach, not cherry pick this and this here. Right. We really need to see this as a public health crisis. And you know what? Not to toot my own horn, but I was the person who introduced the phrase "hack the mindset of the American public." Well, you during did, you got during the right. 2016 election, I said this was an operation to hack the mindset of the American public. They didn't hack the computers. They are framing an information bubble around you, an yeah. information sphere, yeah. and you now live in that info sphere. Now, when I was bad mouthing people about being crazy. I do want, I, I agree with you. And I do need to draw back there because we, the problem that we're dealing with is fundamentally is every American citizen around you is finding themselves in one of three spheres. They're finding themselves in one, I call the normal sphere. Okay, those people who see what's happening, understand traditions, norms, and are aghast at what's going on. Right. The other group are the people who are trapped in the cult sphere of the cult of Trump because no information enters that bubble that they live within other than what the cult leader wants them to have, which is a trait, a common trait of cults. And I want to jump in. I know that you're on a, on a train of thought, mm -hmm. but as a Mooney, I was trained to block any doubts as if it was an evil satanic spirit. So if anyone came to me and said, Moon is a, a liar or Moon's a false prophet or attack the, the theology or whatever, I would do mm -hmm. thought stopping. I was trained to chant, uh -huh. pray, to block out the negative thoughts. And I was told anything that's negative against the family, against the Moonies was Satan. Like, right. just like the, the media is the enemy of the people, like just right. blanket you know, block that out. But I was taught to do this to myself to 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 be a good Mooney. I had phobias mm. installed in my head as a good Mooney because I didn't I wanted to be with God and save the world and make a Garden of Eden on Earth. That's what I thought I was doing. In the meantime, I'm in leadership meetings and Moon is saying that democracy was satanic and Oy. we need a theocracy to rule the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, I, I'm so glad you got out and that you explained this to us, you know, but I was talking about the three bubbles. So we oh, have I'm the sorry. cult, we have the cult of normalcy, and then we have the cult of apathy. And these are the people who just don't want their world rocked. They don't want to hear about inflation. They don't want to hear about, you know, Trump doing 22,500 lives. Uh, they don't care about the election. And those people are enablers, of course, of the Trump cultists. Um, that being said, and I want to touch on something you just said yeah. about how do you deal with these people? Because when I wrote an end to Al Qaeda and we talked about the bite model and I agreed that any negative input to those individuals re super reinforces their belief. And in counter ideology operations that we were doing with ex ISIS and Al Qaeda yeah. members, the one thing that, and this is why my book didn't do very well, was because um, I had introduced that there had been in Islam seven cults throughout mm -hmm. Islamic history, and all of them were deadly. One cult actually raised the city of Mecca to the ground. Hmm and had broken the Kaaba, the meteorite that was in the big black box, broke it in half and held it for over 50 years, hmm. you know, because they decided that going to Mecca was, 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 was you know, Satan worship or yeah. something. And, you know, but Islam purified itself, right? Hmm. Through military action all hmm. the time. The way they got rid of cults was to literally eliminate all of them. Wow. And that the modern iteration the Saudis found that they could get work through them in a less violent way by introducing what I call the weapon of doubt. Mm -hmm. And you were, as you were saying, you were trained to ignore doubt, to thought stop doubt. But to a certain extent, I think that most of our fellow citizens do harbor good intentions. Yeah, they I do. Agree. They are good people with good hearts. 
Um, I fear that even a 9-11 level event won't change their, their way of thinking. It would only force them deeper into their cult belief that Donald Trump would have saved us from all of this. But to a certain extent, when talking to them, I engage them, at, you know, I'm, I'm from Philadelphia, born and bred in Philadelphia. I mean, native Philadelphia, am I a constitutional and declaration of independence originalist, right? My, you know, um, I mean, it was George Washington and his statue in Washington Square that inspired me to join the intelligence community with its inscription, freedom is a light in which many men have died in darkness. Well, I worked in darkness for almost three decades. Right. And I understand the fundamental nature of this. But I also understand that this new pseudo, you know, Trump and everyone who supports him are the neo-patriots movement, okay, is a manipulation. Yes. When the people attacked the Capitol and they were shouting 1776, it was like, hey, guys, um, 1775 is when the war started. <laughs> okay, we only signed the Declaration of Independence in 1776. A lot of things were going on. Okay, right. like Concord and Lexington. Right. You know, you want to go back to it, the Intolerable Acts of 1763. I mean, but, you know, there is a corruption of that data like you had in the moons. And that data is being put, put, put on these people so that they will remove all thought from their mind. And it right. really but is a model of authoritarian thinking. Right. So I want to add in again, because I was in a cult and I confess it and I spent 45 years helping people Gosh. out of all types of cults. The way I think about it is it's a dissociative disorder, as a, mm. speaking as a mental health professional, where the real Steve Hassan, son of Milton and Estelle Hassan of Flushing, Queens, grew up 1.3 <laughs> miles from Donald Trump, by the way, um, got su suppressed by the Mooney Steve Hassan, who was looking to Moon and his wife as my true parents. And I really was, was split. And what I've learned over these years is it's a real error when family members and friends watch a loved one getting radicalized and changed mm -hmm. before their eyes and they try to yell at them and give them facts and force them to leave and that often backfires but then they get they get like well they're an adult they say they're happy i can't deal with them they're nuts now and they mm -hmm. block them or cut off contact i've been saying for forever for 45 years don't cut off contact with people in authoritarian cults because then they only have the bubble but whatever you can do to stay in touch, even just say, I miss you. Or remember when we went fishing together when we were 17 on the river? Mm -hmm. These memories can reconnect some of the neurons. That's the foundation. That how I got out of the Moonies was the real Steve was an idealist. And I was right. pretty smart. I was educated. But I needed to go back in my mind before I heard of the Moonies, like, what was my life? What were my values? Uh, mm -hmm. Where was I headed? And it, if someone had coached my family, they could have gotten me out. But that's what I do now as I coach yeah. people. I write books to try to say, look, there's a methodology that works, but it's got to be based on respect. It's got to be based on love, not on trying to persuade the person out but to ask questions, a good question, and wait for an answer and engage in an interaction, saying, you know what, Malcolm, you're so smart, you're so educated, I don't think you're right, this is role playing now, right. I don't think you're right, but you might be. Like I, you know, and I get accused, by the way, of being in the cult of Soros and the cult oh. of, <laughs> of, of the left-wing media. So I'm like, Instead of being defensive, I'm like, really? Tell me what brainwashing is, please. Let's mm -hmm. have a conversation. I thought I knew what it was about. But by that type of interactivity, you actually can activate the doubts that are already there in people. Because when you're in a cult, you're witnessing 
cognitive dissonance events mm. all the time when i when i would watch something that was wrong i had to suppress it but it was still in my head it surfaced when i woke up and i was like then the memory started coming out interesting when i taught hostage survival for special operations one of the things that we did was we actually had psychological workups of real terrorist hostage guards uh -huh. supervising guards things like that every instructor actually role play a real human being and how he would respond to certain questions interactions and behaviors of our make pretend captives super soldiers and uh -huh. spies that we were training but a key factor that we found it, which was very well known in the psychological community and certainly in, in uh, people who have bought back from hostage taking was reverse Stockholm syndrome, mm -hmm. which, you know, Stockholm syndrome is the automatic, uh, the automatic response to the stress of becoming a hostage, of becoming a hostage. And what it is, is you are affiliating as a technique to um, get better treatment or less survive. The stress. Right. Right. To survive. Reverse Stockholm syndrome is almost always accidental. Only we taught it as a technique. And the word for that was to you must humanize yourself hmm. with your captor. Right. And we found some great examples. Um, you know, there was a Catholic, uh, a Catholic priest who was an instructor at American University of Beirut. Um, his name will come to me any second now. And he was such a good hostage that the, the Lebanese terrorists loved him. Right. And when they actually released him, they bought him candy and flowers. And they said, this guy's a man of faith. He's, he, you know, and he, they, he would talk to them and he would say, the Quran and the Bible are the same, you know, it's same book. Right. Jesus, I, I, I'm a follower of Jesus. You're a follower of Jesus. Right. And they would talk and they would like, okay, well, you need to eat while we're having this discussion. It's brilliant. We're eating, you eat. Whereas others were duct tape for weeks at a time yeah. and beaten horribly uh you know um so that factor that you're saying of instead of you know i'm, I'm going to have to apply because i have a friend right now living in germany who is uh, turned out i've known this person for 30 years a horrible anti-vaxxer uh -huh. you know and she's 70 years old yeah <laughs> and i'm like you are on the hit list right now right. but you know, I have been using those negative, you know, reinforcement techniques. I'm going to have to change that. But now I understand that maybe humanization needs to have a chance to work and it becomes the weapon of doubt that so, needs to be injected into their psyche. Exactly. So what one of the the Achilles heels I found with cult members is if you avoid the frontal attack on the leader, doctor and group, but you ask mm -hmm. them what they think is a destructive cult. And if they say pimps and traffickers, because that's what works with the MAGA crowd, I found, right. or Chinese communist brainwashing principles, they'll listen to that. Then you get to explain what it is. You can use the bite model, the influence continuum, Lifton right. or Singer's models, get them to buy into the social psychology of brainwashing and what it is, demystify mm -hmm. it. And then you can, because you've laid a foundation, you can ask the person to go back in time to their first memory of Donald Trump. And when I ask that, I haven't heard anybody come up with a positive memory, their first memory right. of Donald Trump. They're all like, I thought he was an asshole or I thought he was, you know, whatever, adjectives. Right. Well, many of them are, are, are quite pleased to say he's our asshole. I use the terms... You know, when I look at, 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 at the MAGA group uh, cult, I look at it in terms of insurgency, of insurgents, the yes. way that I had to deal with ISIS, Al Qaeda, all the rest. They're just now in their political indoctrination phase or cultism phase, right? The, the evolution of internal political cultism. And my problem is when, it, you know, I'm constantly talking about this on air. They talk about what is their breaking point all the time. They're constantly saying, when are we going to, like the guy who came out of, uh, about a month ago and said, when can we use our guns? And he said, I'm serious. When can we use our guns? Because they have turned the, the, the AR-15 in such a fetish weapon. 
Yeah. Right. It's it's you know it's it's I, I'd hate to use some of these more archaic tropes, but you know the bang stick, you yeah. know, or the firearm. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, to where the loud noise is going to scare away your opponents. And these things like like books by Sean Hannity. Right. You don't read them. You put it on your shelf as a fetish idol. Uh, you, the AR-15 is a war club for these people to go out, you know, and they want to brandish them. And by brandishing, you intimidate. Right. OK, whereas Om Shinrikyo, the Japanese cult. Their goals were a lot more strategic. Mass murder everyone in Tokyo and take over the government. And he was a conspiratorialist, uh, Oko, uh, Shoko Asahara. He, he, he thought that, you know, we had to fight the CIA and the Masons and the Jews, I think, were his three boogeymen. Right. Yeah, such. but he found that some of the most educated people out there. He were... absolutely did. And he infiltrated the military and the police also. Oh. He had people believing inside... Just the 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 apparatus so um, this i have a quick question for you sure. the 71 million people who think donald trump is awesome the the way i viewed it again i like to express it in terms of tribalism mm -hmm. and that he is the the leader of the white tribe mm -hmm. and to be a leader of the white tribe you got to believe the 1950s were awesome segregation was the greatest thing that ever happened uh mexico Mexican immigrants have to be called racist names and killed if you can or thrown back over the border. It's a cartoonish variant that if, you know, I sometimes tell people that the Trump version of the United States is not Bedford Falls and it's a wonderful life. It's Potterville, uh -huh. right? With bars and hookers and, you know, loose women and fast cars up and down your main street. Mm. And you know, I think that we have to evoke more of that commonality, I guess, to try to bring them to understand that they're actually destroying it, but they think we're the enemy. So how do you deal with that? So for me, it's really about relationships. I mean, I learned this a long time ago, and when the internet happened, then I had to change my methodology completely. But really, like, how do you get someone who's afraid of taking a, a, a vaccination? It's really finding someone that you, they trust. Someone mm. who, and then the person needs to be educated with motivational interviewing and ways to create a step-by-step -step process where the person realizes, mm. I want this, as opposed to trying to talk anybody into it. I also really believe that there are tens of millions of former cult members in the United States from the Moonies, Scientology, all kinds of Bible cults. There's tons of people who've left, but they haven't done their homework to understand mind control, especially if they were born and raised in one of these groups. Right. And once they understand it, now it's not mystical, it's not confusing. And once you have a frame like that, if people start sharing their experiences of believing things that were counter their conscience and made mm. to do things that they didn't like, that's the stepping stone to get other people who've been in the, the bubble, the Trump, the cult of Trump bubble, to start mm -hmm. seeing parallels and such. And in particular, I think former cult MAGA uh, recruiters make the best spokespeople to people in in that group, understanding that the members are told they're traitors, right? right. So they're, we need to break down the, that there are legitimate reasons to exit any mind control cult, etc. Mm -hmm. But one of my theses um, in my book, Malcolm, was that there are many cults actual authoritarian cults in the cult of Trump. Uh, that, for example, there are 30, 40 million Americans in what's called New Apostolic Reformation churches or mega churches. Mm. And what is that? These are groups where the leader says, I am a prophet of God. I get direct revelations from God or I'm an apostle. 
and I have the power to speak in tongues and cast out demons and do faith healings. And they so program with bite, control of behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions, the right. pseudo identity of their spiritual warriors against Satan. And right. he, these are the people, but they're following the who they think is a prophet who's going to protect them from evil spirits. They're not following Donald Trump. The minute the apostle says, God gave me a new revelation, we're going with DeSantis or whoever, they're going to follow. So wow. it's, it's get, and, and for me, well, I, I don't understand why when uh, uh, an anti-vaxxer, uh, co you know, anti-COVID is a hoax pastor dies of COVID, why there aren't Christians being encouraged to reach out to everybody in that church right to discuss it you know and yeah. especially when the person is saying in their dying i i was wrong i wish i had told people to get vaccinated like that for me is golden that but it's got to be timed the delivery agents have to be trained properly well this is where this is where we start getting those those crossovers between isis and al-qaeda because it's, it's that moment of where there could be doubt, where the guy, you know, says this is wrong. We shouldn't be doing this. We killed children. We killed women. Right. Um, that the cult group actually closes ranks and eliminates the, those people from thought, as well as in many instances physically, you know. And I think a lot of the, the MAGA behavior of threats towards public officials uh, which is essentially bringing you in line with the, the belief system. And if you don't believe, we have Second Amendment remedies to get you to believe. Right. Um, and, and this is where terrorist groups, certainly I know, and, and ISIS was, was very, very good at this, uh, that the last thing they did, if you were to run or defect, was they would immediately brand you an infidel. Yeah. And ISIS is... Uh, ideology uh, harked back to the what the first cult in Islamic history, a group called the Karamita. No, the Khawarij, the Khawarij. The Khawarij, the Prophet Muhammad himself predicted there would be a group like them. He said they will be young men who will be devoted Muslims, but at the first opportunity, they will leave Islam like an arrow leaves the bow. And the, the Khawarij means outsiders. Interesting. And the Saudis understood that to really insult these modern day wannabes who wanted to be like, you know, fight like they were the foot soldiers of the Prophet Muhammad, they labeled them a cult that the Prophet himself insulted. Uh -huh. Right. And the first thing they did was they put a press release out that anyone who calls us the Khawarij, we will behead. Well, how many times can you behead somebody? Right. <laughs> but they immediately would label anyone who threatened the superiority of their ideology with being an outcast, with being an infidel, which gave them religious permission to kill you. Wow. You know? And so my problem in the modern day with the cult MAGA crew here, which as you say, there are many subcults and many of them are religious cults, yes. as you say, and they've all found this umbrella tribal chief whose only commonality with them is that he's white and powerful and espouses all of their worst and basest beliefs, like the mass murder of 80 million of their other fellow citizens. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't say it out loud. He, by not rejecting it, he says, I, I validate what you say. And this is why QAnon exploded right. because there were many QAnon attempts prior to that. There was CIA and on, FBI and on. There was a liberal one by Lo Lois Mensch we called Lou Anon. She said the exact same things QAnon said, and she had so much play out of it. I suspect QAnon was mimicking her. Yeah. But I, she I, was like, everyone will be arrested in a swoop where the FBI will scour the government and hundreds of Republicans will be rolled up one year before QAnon existed. Right. Only the, the people who are suspected of creating this fake story the watkins family the father and son they just took it a step further donald trump will mass murder 
all of our enemies. Yeah, I I kind of question the HBO version of putting putting the Watkins at the top of QAnon. I I, oh, I, I think that I agree that they hijacked it. They 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 may have hijacked it, but my sense was there were former American military intelligence psyops people that were involved with that too. Oh, like Mike that's Flynn. A, the Mike Maybe. Flynn theory. The problem is. I have living in my house a active duty army psychological operations person. And we did a study of this yes. and we did it using the step-by-step -step manualization of how these information warfare operations are executed. Uh -huh. And it's in my book, how it's all fake. There, there are no professionals um, at all hmm. in the QAnon subject. Now I do have a chapter on how, the Republican Party tried to co-opt QAnon and QAnon ate it whole uh -huh. to the point where the ideology of the Republican Party is technically a soft version of QAnon. Mm -hmm. uh, but and that's where Michael Flynn and his friends could say, well, we're going to harness the energy of these people who all oh, think Walter. that super spies are operating at the, you know, secretly behind the lines, as they say, and are the white hats who are going to seize the military and mass murder 80 million liberals. Yeah, right. I need to ask you to, a couple more things. Sure. Uh, I, I could talk to you for days because you're fascinating <laughs> and a wealth of knowledge. But uh, there were three retired Army generals, I believe, who wrote a, an op-ed in the Washington Post saying we have right. an extremism problem in our military. And I listened to one being interviewed who thought that Fox News should come off of every TV on every. That's day. correct. And so, can you talk about the uh, militaries and what they should be doing? Yeah, I cannot understand why the Secretary of Defense has not deemed Fox News a threat. And maybe he is just trying to play kumbaya, not antagonize people. But 31, Donald Trump's approval rating in the armed forces was not very high. It was somewhere between 31 and 36 percent of the armed forces. He had a much higher disapproval rating, 48 mm percent, -hmm. because the armed forces, we do not tolerate idiots well. <laughs> we know who these people are. We know it's, it's the Bugs Bunny-esque cartoon of the guy with the hammer tapping the top of an artillery shell, yeah. okay? A person who will create mayhem in the good order and discipline of the armed forces and may in fact kill one of us through stupidity uh, or, or just corruptibility. Right. So we, but the problem is we do have a chain of command yes. and we will only listen to the chain of command. This chain of command is run by civilians, which is fine. The problem with Donald Trump is, is that the election of that person as commander in chief is the confidence of the nation in him running the armed forces, no matter how much of a babbling idiot he is. Yeah. Therefore, he has been chosen by the tribe, in this yeah. case, to, to have the confidence of the nation, no matter what people think. The armed forces has to follow the orders, unless, of course, they are unlawful orders. Right. And what I think the, um, the three generals, including General Taguba, uh, the man who was tasked to uh, investigate Abu Ghraib and all of our torture in Iraq, who blew the lid off of essentially George W. Bush's essentially taking the gloves off. Just that statement yeah. was a permission slip all the way down to the lowest private to hurt, kill, maim, or in, or humiliate people, no matter how many American soldiers died from That was in Iraq, and it was- That uh, was in Iraq. And it was a horrible thing. And, and as far as I remember, they didn't blame anyone high up. They just nope. blamed the poor people who were there. They did in... blame one officer who was a whistleblower. Yeah. Of course, yeah. they yeah. punished him. And that's why the permission slip went out. And you have famous Republicans right now, like a former Army Colonel Alan West, who hmm. took a pistol out and just on the basis of something he remembered from the movie, The Green Berets, he thought that an Iraqi policeman was pacing down his base so that the Iraqis could fire mortars into it at night. He literally got that from the movie, The Green Berets, wow. uh, with John Wayne. Uh, the Iraqis fought Iran for 10 years. There were tens of thousands of experts 
right. in mortars and rockets who could look at the horizon and put one down within a within three feet. So they right. didn't need that stupidity. But right. that guy is still a hero in the Republican Party for mock executing this man. My point is about the armed forces. When General Milley made his statement, he said that we do not support, we do not get interfere, we do not interfere with elections, and we support the Constitution of the United States and not an individual. The marker was set, and Donald Trump couldn't do a thing, despite the fact that all of his minions believe that he is going to, like I said, round up all liberals. But what, carry what out can the military execution. do, Malcolm, if there are white supremacists who are in their ranks or cults? We, we find are... them and we get rid of them. And believe me, it's easier than you think. If they're there now, they're underground. But the average soldier has to be around average soldiers of other races, creeds, colors, and sexes. And believe me, we talk stupidity all the time. And if you think you're going to go into a little corner and talk white power, neo-Nazi stuff, someone's going to hear it. And that's when the system, the system in the armed forces, the military justice system has been honed over 244 years to as my favorite chief petty officer in my entire career said in his equal opportunity speech to two, a white and a black sailor on a submarine, he said, I will crush you like a bug. That is how the armed forces will handle these people because they, are, they will interfere with good order and discipline. You don't know whether they're the next Timothy McVeigh, who by the way, was an army sergeant who won the bronze star yeah. in Iraq and who planned, who planned and carried out the Oklahoma City bombing with his platoon sergeant, Terry Nichols. Right. So this, we already have a, bet, a template for right. radicalized soldiers. I mean, George Lincoln Rockwell, the head of the, the man who founded American neo-Nazism, get this, in 1949, just at the end of World War II, was a World War II combat veteran. And he thought the Nazis were right along with Henry Ford and some other oh, yeah. people. Oh, yeah, going for him for I hours. I also want to don't ask you, you're an expert in interrogations, and I watched- yeah, I got some experience. I, I watched The Forgotten Prisoner. That's a documentary that came out, um, and it deals with Guantanamo, but also just right. the horrible uh, beating and torture. I want to have ask you to opine on well, you know that the, re the only reason that anyone knows who I am is because in 2006, I wrote an op-ed for Small Wars Journal, which is sort of like the Pentagon's unofficial think tank. It had like a Small Wars Council had like 10,000 years of combined military counterinsurgency experts. Uh -huh. And I was the terrorism guy. And I wrote an op-ed in response to a statement that Terror, that waterboarding was no more than a fraternity prank. Mm. And I wrote an op-ed called Waterboarding is Torture, period. Period, right. And um, it would later be quoted by President Obama when he signed off and ended all enhanced interrogation techniques in the armed forces. He said, waterboarding, these are torture, period. And the United States does not do this. So that's my claim to fame. Uh, and, and that launched me into news media and suddenly got me, you know, I was seen by MSNBC and now I'm on TV all the time, but I had no intention of coming out, you know, that was the involvement in the torture debate because I ran the last waterboard of the Department of Defense at mm. the Navy's resistance uh, uh, division, resistance training division at Coronado at our, at our survival school. Uh -huh. it, the problem was we used it as a um what do we call it a stress demonstrator it was not designed to make you talk it was designed to show the other 50 idiots that are in the class that the enemy has the ability to make you open your mouth and what we teach at our school is what to say when you open your mouth BS, and what you're supposed right? to say is the facts you were torturing me i would have said anything right and so that ruins their their ability to exploit you fully in a non-coercive environment 
Right. And Ali Sufan, who is interviewed, who got the details of who did 9-11. Sure. He, it was a whole political thing. Uh, and, and they stopped what was good intel that was coming out of him by it forcing well, people to do this horrible torture. Sure. Well, you know, the CIA got duped and I actually had the, the I actually had the presence of mind to say this uh, to the to the then CIA director, John Brennan, uh, the two psycho, the two survival, evasion, resistance and escape psychologists who introduced this to the CIA um, were frauds. Yeah. And they've got one hundred and sixty million dollars of our taxpayer money. And yep. they were frauds. Yep. And they should be sued to the day they die. Yeah. Because they defrauded the CIA by claiming expertise in an area they had no expertise whatsoever. Exactly. They were the staff psychologists at Joint Personnel Recovery Agency. Their job was to watch the students and the staff for stress. Right. And to see if they were going overboard. And they used that position to claim that they were the world's greatest interrogation experts and that they could break students, which is interesting because it went against everything. We right. taught at every school since the first one was opened in 1952. Yep. Yeah, the documentary was work. excellent and it just shows. So I want to just come back and wrap up about what's sure. happening right now in the United States of America. And I would like to, if possible, end on a hopeful note. Sure. Based on <laughs> what what good good citizens who understand that we're really in a lot of danger to lose our system of democracy and what people can do. And, and we don't want people to be in the apathetic bubble where they do binge watching of Netflix and video games and say, That's I right. can't handle it. We want to give right. people real things that they can do. Well, we've known that we, we certainly have seen recently that um, that certainly the Republicans have mastered the art of using fear to mobilize their voter base. Right. Well, this cuts both ways. Only we have a real fear, something that I can show you will be tangible, which will impact every moment of your life. And that is the end of American democracy and the United States a, taking a conscious shift to autocracy. Yep. To where you think things were bad under Trump. Imagine things with Trump as the Speaker of the House next year. Because yep. the Republicans have said they're going to vote him as Speaker of the House. Kevin McCarthy's not going to win that seat. It only requires a voice majority vote for Donald Trump to be elected Speaker of the House. He doesn't have to be elected, you know, into the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And you know he'll want that job just so that he can humiliate Nancy Pelosi's office. Mm -hmm. And then use it as a springboard to becoming president again. So all of these things being said, yes, we have 10 months before the election of November 2022. It is far more dangerous period than the election of Donald Trump, because we now have seen what it's like. Normalcy reigns and things happen when we all get to vote. The problem is today, voting and democracy in the United States took a knife to the heart. Yes. You know, Kirsten Cinema, who I'm not sure who she ever represented, but she did not represent um, the Democratic Party or the Green Party or any of the liberals and progressives she claims right. she represented. She today said she will not vote to end the filibuster, which puts an end to the opportunity to rebalance the 525 laws aimed at depressing and breaking the black Latino vote in the United States. And it will happen now. And there's only one way to beat it. There's only one way to beat it. And this is where the hope comes in. We have to mobilize the 81 million people that voted for Joe Biden in 2020, who forgot to vote down ticket for Congress, right. which is why we're within five seats of losing the House. The Republicans are targeting 40 seats and that is not just the end of democracy. That's the voting in autocracy and dictatorship. Didn't they vote Hitler in? Wasn't that what didn't he win? Adolf Hitler his? won with one third of the vote. Yep. What's this? What's the saying? One third of the German public 
voted for one third of the German public, wait, one third of the German public uh, voted uh, to eliminate one third of the German public and the other third didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where we are. We can mobilize, but can we've we... got to do what you did today. You've got to explain the facts. Exactly. The opposition isn't going to believe us, but this is your fight. This could be your greatest and final act of patriotism is to save America this November, save American democracy. Interesting. The other side is using that exact same phrase, save America from Joe Biden and the com Chinese communists. Chinese communists, their leader got love letters that he gushes over from a communist. A right. Chinese communist, by the way, because Kim Il Sung is a Maoist, right? Which is a Chinese communist agrarian of the ilk of Mao Zedong, right? So, you know, and his other bestest buddy is an ex KGB officer, right. devout communist his whole life. So this projection is 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 what we're going to have to battle, and we are now in for a battle, not just the soul of America, the existence of America. Yeah. And now is the time for all good men and women to stand and use the, the words of the U.S. Army motto, this I will defend. Yeah. And, you know, people are our best human, uh, our, our best resource to apply. There's so many brilliant, creative people. If they understood what's really happening, I bet we could come up with some really novel out of the box using lots of imagination uh countermeasures because what what's been done on us as you said this is your life you've been watching how this works and yes mm -hmm. it's gotten more sophisticated with the internet uh and platforms and and data collection on people but we we, we have to stand up for each other and we, we do. are our brother's keeper well we have to stand up for this nation and that includes bringing the 71 million guys who voted for Trump along. Yep. And, you know, I think that the best doubt that we could introduce to them is say, why, why are you abandoning the principles of this country? And make them debate why would that they aren't. And if they go 1776, I'm a patriot. You got to say, well, right now you wouldn't be considered help that. Help me You'd be understand it. Yeah, Teach help me understand me how this. you learned what you learn. Because if it's true, I'll believe it too, but it may not be. And people need to be able to step back. And that's the antidote to blind faith is perspective to step back and see the history and see the right. methodology in other right. places and then reflect and apply it back on us. Right. Malcolm Nance, thank you. You are a national treasure. Uh, Oof, as, when, as are you. Well, I am so glad you asked me to speak. Yeah, no, I uh, learned so much today. Oh, uh, well, we got to work together. We've got to get people together who understand what's happening and who are not going to just say, you know what, I'm going to go fishing because I, 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 you know, I'm tired. Like everybody's stressed out and tired. Everybody's anxious with the pandemic and the economy and overload. But we can't afford to, 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 to put this on. Like you said, the next 10 months is absolutely crucial. It is. Yep. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Steve. Stay in touch.